Well, what happened uh, this year going into the season with acquiring Derek Rose, Markeith Morris, picking up Wood on the waiver wire, uh, Kennard coming back after a nice promising year, we were excited. We thought our bench was really, really good with those guys. What happened is we never got healthy enough right from the start. We've never had our starting lineup that we projected play one game this year. So the injuries just precipitated a lot of this with the record and where we are. Um, a rebuild was going to happen eventually. And I think, as I said, what I just said, we had to make that move. And that, that's why we made the deal. And where next year, Andre would have a large contract, we wouldn't have any cap space, uh, gives us some flexibility. Were you confident he was going to opt in? I don't know. That's, <laughs> we have no idea if he was going to opt in, opt out. And that's what a player option is all about. And that's to their advantage. I totally understand it, uh, but we had to make a move where if we wanted to start it now, that's what, that's what happened. Is that what this is, a rebuild now? Is that right now. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, when you start it now, I mean, we're still now. What can we do with that cap space? The trades can occur again at draft time. We could be active after July 1 when free agency. Do you use the cap space to bring in players? If, the, if it makes sense, that player, and it's on a favorable contract for the organization, or do you use that cap space in order to collect assets for future trades uh, or free agency? Yeah. Flexibility is, is the whole reason we did it. And in order to rebuild, uh, you need flexibility. And, you know, we have the young players here that we are very – we could only make moves the last two seasons around the margins, right? So – Bruce Brown was one of them at, a, at a, in the 40s, wherever we drafted him. Uh, from where Bruce was his rookie season to now, he's improved. There's no reason that he's not going to take another step. Last year, uh, when people say, well, why would they make more moves? Well, we had Reggie Bullock, who was doing a very nice job for us. But we decided, instead of just making a move of getting two second round picks with no names on there, no names attached, and they're late 40s, 50s, we all think we're good at drafting. That's pretty hard. So what we got excited about last year was getting a second round pick for the future, but there was a name attached, Svi McCulloch. And our front office knew the, knew the young man. Our draft uh, scouts knew him. We had scouted him for four years at Kansas. He's a young kid. We were all excited about getting that. And I think the fans should be excited because that kid is making a move and there's no reason he can't make another move. Then you look at Wood, who we picked up on a waiver. He has improved also. Now he has to improve in other things we need to do uh, that the coaches talked about over and over again. So we'll get a, a better look at him for the rest of the season if we want to get involved there. And then with our rookie, Saku, I feel like I'm on a roller coaster ride with the kid. <laughs> I mean, the other day he gets 17 in the first half. You're going, holy smokes. And then I wonder, is he still on the floor in the second half? Where'd he go? But that's okay. I'm not shocked. He just turned 19. So I think the fans should be excited that we see glimpses of, wow, and then we get see glimpses of what's he thinking. But he's 19. I'll take the chances of a kid 19 with that body, with that uh, uh, ability. Now, will he put the time on the court with our development program to get him to that next level? That's the thing. But that's we'll have our draft this uh, summer, and we have all our first-round picks. So that's how we have to do this. Some of the guys you just mentioned, are, are those the guys you view as the core uh, of the team going forward? Or, or, or are there guys that... Well, I think there are young you, guys excite, you can yeah. get excited about. I think, I think you get real excited about Luke Kennard. I think what he did from last year to this year when he was healthy, uh, uh, terrific. That's why the NBA likes him. If you, you want to look at a player that everybody wants to talk about, it's Kennard. He's got size. He shoots over 40% from three. Terrific ball handler, runs the pick and roll, sees the floor. And in today's game, you can't have enough, in my opinion, you can't have enough players who could be playmakers and shooters. Yeah, his name came up in trade rumors as well. Uh, is there anybody that's quote-unquote untouchable on your roster? No, right? I, I think where you are 
it would be silly to say anybody's untouchable. Um, but in order to get certain players, the packages would have to make sense for us to give away talent and not get in return. That, that makes no sense to me. Speaking of return, I know some people thought, is that all you get for Andre Drummond? But yeah. can you explain what, what the market was kind of telling you at this well, time? Well, it's a marketplace, so it's what the market pace drives. I think with Andre, it was more the player option because the team selecting him, A, don't, doesn't know if he's going to opt in, and B, doesn't know if they can sign him to a long-term contract. So that was the big reason uh, what else is happening and what uh, We've seen this in the league, and I don't know if it's going to be right or wrong, but you know the league wanted the perimeter players back in the game. They brought the three-point line in. They brought the fouls. You really have to be careful touching the guy outside. They didn't help the big guy yet, okay? And now my good friend in Houston, Mike D'Antoni, is not playing with a center. He's playing with six-five guy at center. Now, I think Mike's a genius, but I don't know if it'll work or not, but we'll see. So that's all talking about what's happening in the NBA. And it's evolving, which is great. Change is good. Um, so did that, does that have a factor in this? But for me, it was more the player option that, that Dre had that you know, caused what the marketplace was. I know Andre on social media felt like he was somewhat blindsided, yeah, right. didn't get enough heads up on the trade. Uh, was that accurate? Have you had a conversation with him since? Well, a couple things there. Emotions get raw in this. I've been through this. It stinks. I hate it when you have to call a player that he's traded. Andre's a really good human being. He's been great in the community. Um, we had talked a while ago that he, you know, there's a chance we could move him. I've been in constant contact with his agents that there's a chance it could happen. In this particular case, uh, the Cleveland deal didn't come till late in the process. Um, but what we did, and it's hard to do this. I hate when the social media gets out and that's how the, ki the young player is notified. So we called Andre and his agent as soon as we did the deal. We didn't waste any time. We wanted them to hear from us first. And it got out in social media in five minutes or so. So we, now Andre, you know, is upset. I think you'd have to ask him what it is, but He's a good, good guy. Emotions are raw. I know, I know Andre was a part of the trade conversations very early on. Uh, how many other deals were you looking at? And, and were there other things you were, you were discussing and, and other players possibly involved? I would have to say, I go back to my comment about Reggie Bullock. We would be uh, uh, ready to pull the trigger on a trade, uh, but I'd say you need two teams to make a trade, and it was a marketplace thing. So next steps now going forward. Ed. Well, I mean, the, the uh, draft coming up real soon. Uh, we're working extremely hard because we have to hit on the draft pick. <laughs> we're going to have to hit, you know, not make mistakes and, and hopefully hit on the draft pick. So we'll be out there hard. Um, I'm going on the road uh, tonight. Uh, we have a terrific scouting staff. We have a, a, a really good front office with uh, Malik and Pat. Uh, we just have to make good moves, and we have to use that money wisely. And I, I can't sit here today and tell you how that money will be used. It'll depend how the marketplace goes and the opportunities we have to use it. How confident are you that Blake and Derek will be part of whatever it is here going forward next season? Yeah, with, with Blake, Blake has to concern himself only with one thing, in my opinion, is get healthy. And he's working really hard here. Uh, he should be back on the basketball floor in June. So all this rehab will be behind him physically. He'll have all summer to work as a basketball player, which is what really hurt him coming into this year. So that's a positive. With, and that's all he should worry about and what we should worry about. With Derek, he's been lights out. He's been terrific. He's on a very nice contract. He loves it here in Detroit. He doesn't want to go anywhere. But what I like about having Derek is with this process of all these young guys, you have to have some veteran leadership. He's a veteran leadership in the locker room. And you talk about example, you can't get better veteran leadership by example, how that kid plays and how hard he plays. So, you know, do I know he's going to be part of it? Right now, 
Yes, he is, and I'm excited about it. Last one, I'll let you go. Wood becomes your starting center now. Is this a make it or break it opportunity for a guy like Christian Wood? Yeah, I mean, it'll be audition. Uh, Christian Wood, fine. Uh, I don't know what the coach talk with Henson coming in. Will he get an audition? So it, it'll be interesting uh, how uh, it, that's up to Coach Casey. I, I don't tell the coach who to play. <laughs>